think you're going to enjoy this one. I've been looking forward to this one. Um, I think you're going to like who the model is for this figure drawing um, hour. And this is Tony, and the model is not Tony. <laughs> but this is a little kind of a mannequin thing artists can buy for doing their figure studies from. But I don't use this guy at all, really, because he never does what you want him to do, because his range of motions are not particularly human. Um, so where possible, if you can get a real model, it's great. But you can't always get a real model. And, you know, we've had that with our portrait settings as well. So we're trying to find ways around this. So one thing you can do that I really like doing is um to use sculptures as your models. And there are a load of really amazing sculptures out there. And you might have seen the little thumbnail on this. Um our model who who you can meet over on the community tab because all the reference photos for them are over there. I think I put up I think it's four reference photos, three or four, for today's uh, drawing. So we'll put Tony away for the moment. And I'll show you what, how, what our approach is going to be. Here's some of the materials that typically you would use if you go to a life drawing class. And they can be as simple as a couple of pencils and um, your uh, rubber or um, kneadable eraser, <coughs> pencil pair, uh, paper, but you can use colour. We're not going to use a lot of colour today. Our model, the photos of our model, um, were kindly taken by people who saw them in Italy and uploaded uh, the photos that they took in the gallery to uh, Wikimedia Commons for people to use for things like this, you know, which is very nice of them. So that's a great resource for artists, but they're in, uh, they're not uh, in kind of skin tones. So all this amount of soft pastel skin colors, and we're gonna, not going to need a lot of that. You could have a go with this in color, but you'd be, you'll be making up a lot of stuff if you do. But what I am going to use is um, these pencils, which I've, I've used before on this live stream. And these are lovely soft pencils. Um, the brand is Lyra, but they're a kind of a soft, slightly waxy uh, pencil. And you'll notice that some of the colours in them are very pale colours. Um, not all of those are going to be terribly useful on the sheet of paper that I intend to start with which is this and it's you know a fairly large size sketch pad um let me see what size it is do i have size on the sketch pad i'm always forgetting size i should have known well it's an a3 an a3 size sketch pad so what i'm what i'm going to try and do is fill this page today but uh the reason I thought about using these pencils rather than an ordinary pencil, or even, you know, I might actually use these, yes, charcoal, or even a pen, is that uh, I might work on dark paper as well. And what I do is I get um, double-sided tape. And for, like, working sketches like this that I'm going to do, um, you know, I'd be working different parts of the page and I might want to even stick on different paper. And the reason I'm saying that is that I have some different paper. don't actually have any sort of brown paper that's like an Angra drawing paper or anything. But I have a bit of old card from something that, you know, uh, that's basically brown paper. So I can do a bit of drawing on that. So you see, some of the paler pencils will come out okay on that. So that's something to consider for this session as well. And the point of this is to do 
working drawing is not a finished piece. So we're learning how to draw the figure doing this and, you know, trying to stay loose. And if you go to a life drawing class, you know, you might have a section. It might be a two hour long class and you might have a section at the beginning where you're doing warm up sketches for five or ten minutes at a time. But this guy, our um, sculpture is going to stay still for the whole session. But it's great because we can see him from different angles in the same pose, which is going to be awfully useful. So he has no problem staying still for the full hour for us. So uh, if I just start the way I would if I was in a life drawing class, well, I might start doing a few jet, what you call gestural drawings just to warm up. And I'm using a brown pencil for this. So I have the reference the first reference photo on front of me here, and that's on the community tab. If you wanted to work along, or you want to see what the photos look like. Um, and I'll tell you about the guy while I'm doing this gestural drawing, which is like a warmy, uppy thing where you're getting the main lines of the figure in. And it's, you know, it's not, it's not meant to look super realistic or anything. So, uh, this guy is known as the Boxer of Quirinal. And Quirinal is an area in Rome. And this fellow was found in the 19th century in this area called Quirinal. And he is a boxer, or was a boxer, because this dates from first or possibly second century BCE, before the Christian era, or BC, if you prefer it that way. And he lay in the ground from what they call the Hellenistic Age, which was late Greek antiquity, late, well, later than antiquity, but it's past the Golden Age in Greece. And uh, he stayed in the ground, right in the middle of Rome, hidden, until they were going to um, build, I don't know, it was roads or something in the 19th century. They were doing all sorts of building in Rome. And uh, loads of stuff had been discovered in Rome, like back in the Renaissance, and from the kind of 15th century onwards, they were finding stuff, and artists were just wowed by the stuff they were finding. And... Um, but this guy they didn't find until they dug down. And it looks like about, there are photos of this. And there's actually a link to uh, the photo, um, a little article about it, because it's so interesting, I thought. Um, of this guy, his where he was in situ, uh, down about maybe, it looked like about 25 foot to me, down on the ground. And he must have been some size, because when you look at him, um, he's so uh, amazing, such an amazing sculpture, because when you flip through the photos, you see um, the, I said he was, it was sort of monochrome, but actually there's a lot of colour in him, and he's kind of a blood splattered uh, boxer, who's clearly just had a match, um, because he's got bruising and cuts and everything on his face, he's got a uh, blood spilled on his thighs and everything um, from having just been in a match. And this is him. This looks like him just sitting down after a match. So um, part, this part of the reason I, I chose this piece because it's such a wonderfully dramatic piece, um, but expressive and so beautifully sculpted that there are elements of it that are kind of realistic and elements that aren't. And we'll talk about those things. So I have the first kind of little drawing down that I would call a gestural drawing. And a gestural drawing just gets the kind of main lines of something down and you don't really worry too much about details. Now I can come along and build on that on top of that drawing if I want or start again on another drawing. Or that drawing could have been done up here on a small uh, scale just to see can I get things in the right place and you build it like a wireframe see 
So you see this mark here, that's the backbone going down. And the legs are literally a stick man, isn't it? So he's not like Tony here, but look at Tony. If we try and put Tony into the same position to see, can Tony help us out with the pose? He doesn't even really bend properly the same way because his ball and socket joints don't have a proper socket in them. Uh, so, you know, he's never going to go into the same pose really as this guy or look as elegant or have the kind of um, subtlety of um, counter um, movements and uh, flexed muscles against relaxed muscles um, around his torso and everything, you know. And the sculptor of this, a, a, a guy that very little is known about, Apollonius, um, the Athenian sculptor of first century. Uh, he, nobody knows uh, much about this guy, but they they don't know whether he was he was known as a copyist, but they don't know whether this is a copy of something or whether this is a, an original. And I love to think that it, it, it's an original piece just because it's so um observed with passion. You know, and that's a very important thing with art, just that you have to have a passion for what you're doing and be, be really excited about what you're doing. And um, I only discovered this piece a few weeks ago. I was so excited about finding it. So this is why I wanted to do it again. This is why I had the idea of the live stream. So the, there's your wireframe, how your wireframe happens. You're looking at kind of distances between important parts on the body like elbows and parts that things bend and you know you're looking at lengths of limbs as well and you're going to have some effects like you see this one here the way this limb is shorter than this forearm length here that's foreshortening isn't it that's what foreshortening is when something is that arm when you look at the reference photo is coming towards the viewer a little bit and this arm is more side on to the view. So this is one of the things that can be very challenging about um, doing figure studies because you've got all kinds of foreshortening happening. And in fact, um, there is a there are a lot of different views of this piece online. That's why it's a great piece to draw from um, because you can go online and find all sorts of references from different angles. And you could be quite happily filling up a page of with this figure from all sorts of different angles. If you didn't want to do them just from one angle, I might actually do them from a few angles. Um, if you were standing here, for example, uh, at a slightly lower um we're standing kind of on front of him, uh, looking down slightly at him because he's seated. But uh, if we were seated too and on front of him, more to the right, this would be more, this foot would be more foreshortened and the leg would be shorter. So from the knee to the ankle would be shorter at that angle, you know. So... <clears throat> You can't just measure a limb and then say, well, the other limb is going to be the same distance. It's not. So this is why it's helpful to build this little wireframe thing. And you could say, for example, OK, his hips appear to be here in relation to the distance between the top of that leg where the edge of his behind is seated and the knee and um, the other the other knee is out here. So his hip must be there. So this backbone area here, I have it a little bit too straight at that angle. It's actually curved. So it's actually, um, that's got to meet in the middle of that pelvis somewhere, hasn't it? Now, when you say the middle, uh, it won't necessarily appear like the middle because his hip, is also at an angle. <laughs> you see, everything's at an angle. And this is why gestural drawings are great for warming you up, because you have an intuitive feel 
for these things um, already. So if you kind of go fairly freely at it, you're more likely to get things in the right place than if you start off trying to measure very carefully out here because what will happen is if you work it from the head downwards you go more and more wrong possibly in your measurements as you go down so this idea of doing this little wireframe gestural drawing thing um is very helpful i think uh, these are just little tips you get your own way of doing things and um you know always situating the head correctly is important and um you also do this in a life drawing class. You might get up and walk around the model because you might say, I don't understand. Is that backbone curved? So you might get up and walk around to the side and look and see what way his back is, his back slumped or curved or what. So that you're kind of understanding what you're drawing as well. And that will help you get things in that place as well. So some of the drawing is about getting things in the right place. And some of it is about... Um, getting a good solid drawing uh, so getting things in the right place is a uh, key to that obviously you know but not you can do that and still have a very dull drawing you know it doesn't guarantee like an interesting drawing or anything so uh let's move on slightly from this and um i haven't sort of moved around to the side view yet but i had another photo there i think i've given you a photo that's a side view as well so at this stage it's good to look at the side view and just compare it and this is why i'm saying we're going to be moving around a little bit i want to understand this a little better better before i get uh more finicky about you know the actual drawing of it and start getting musculature and things so we're still at the kind of wireframe if you like to think of it that way stage and we don't care if the whole page looks ugly because we're exploring and learning, right? Now, a very interesting thing, I think, about this photo. This is his backbone here, so the backbone is curved. An interesting thing, I think, about this sculpture, right? This is not a real human being sculpture. So the head is in a very um, exaggerated position. And it would be very difficult to get into this position naturally. It's com it's almost completely turned around to the side. It's very slightly tilted up, but turned to the side. That's, you know, um, you can kind of tell by looking at it, uh, but it's not quite, there's something not quite exactly correct anatomically about it so this exaggeration was kind of built into this statue as um as a sculptural kind of um a dramatic point in it you know so it's a bit of artistic license is used here so this thing of him looking up uh over this way is very important in this sculpture for its dramatic impact so we have a a couple of things um and these are relevant to talk to about in relation to figure drawing, because if you're doing life drawing, uh, often you get a chance um, to set the model up whatever way you want. And, uh, you know, if you're in a life drawing class, the class is asked, well, like, has anybody got any particular pose they want the model in or anything, you know, that they want to practice drawing? And um, pe people tend to have their own kind of favourite uh, pose repertoires for particular reasons that they convey some kind of you know interesting feeling or something and the feeling conveyed by this is the tension between this completely this is personal view like you have your own view on it and we'll see what you think to me it's the um, it's even more pronounced than this actually that uh, sort of extremely slumped backbone um and the kind of lack of tension in that and then the tension of this head twisted around that way so you've got a, an inwards downwards curve here and the arms support that um feeling 
of everything inward um, reflection, inward thinking. And it is a, an inward looking pose, very contained in itself, except for this. So if that had been just looking down, you would be kind of invited more into this. But but this is a boxer, you see, that performs for crowds of people. So, like, that's kind of the meaning of that head being that way. And just um, dramatically for the look of it, it adds this wonderful sense of drama. So um, it's good to understand what it is that's making the thing work, uh, you know, as a pose what's so amazing about that pose and that's what's amazing about it so you see the way i'm sort of working on a few things at the same time and i'm looking at it from the side as well as the front so i've now got sort of position of backbone from the side and if i'm doing a tony on it or maybe tony is slightly useful for this bit if we look at tony here um They've kind of split them up into waist to get the waist to bend so that that backbone can have the curve on it. The rib cage, this is kind of the rib cage, is down at this angle. So you see the way you can build everything as kind of a series of ovals, if you want, you know. Um, it, it does kind of work doing that because you can see the way his belly is is going to be straighter in that view of things and he is behind down here is there's his hips you see on the wire that works with the wireframe idea so his hip bone would be here so you're always thinking of that wireframe shape inside um inside the figure and that helps you as does the negative spaces see this space here not doing the lighting exactly right, but I'm trying to show you the next space. You put Tony out of the way for a minute and move this over so I can show you. <clears throat> this shape here, this is the side view now. I'm looking at it for the, for the reference photo. This shape in here is quite helpful for helping you get the angle of the arm. So we have the angle of the pelvis sorted. Uh, we have where the backbone runs along with it and the shoulders. So the, the top of that bicep there is the shoulder. And we've got clues to that from some of the little curves here that lead up to the neck. Okay, so this is what helps you get things a little bit more, a little bit more exactitude into things. Um, then you can start building biceps and everything. But that actually helped us get this angle of the arm correct, you know. And um, you could say to yourself, OK, well, I'll be clever and I'll compare the length of the um, upper arm with the length of the hip to knee here because one, this can't be longer than that, but actually we're looking slightly down at this figure. So that can mess that up. So it's foreshortening is an idea you have to keep in mind very much when you're doing any sort of figure study. Also, the closer you are to the subject that's posing for you, the more distortion you can get. So you have to be a bit careful with that as well. So uh, that is, um, I'm doing it from the side because I'm going to move around and do it from the front in a minute. I'll build on this figure. In a bit. And then we'll do the whole thing with uh, tones going on and I might get the brown paper out. I want to keep an eye at the time, see, because the, the hour quizzes by. The other thing you can do from this uh, quite happily is do a really nice um portrait and I, I've included um the head 
just a shot, a close up of the head in this as well for anybody who doesn't want to do figure studies but wouldn't mind having a go at a portrait. And there's so many like really great sculptures to find online. And time was that you went to an art college, and I think they still do it in places like Russia. You don't necessarily get sort of better art out of this because you can get very staid, staid, dull art out of this as well. Looks like you're sitting on the toilet there. Um, but I'm going back to the front wheel. Hang on. And build on this. Um, uh, time was that when you went to art college, that you used to be told, OK, you were drawing from the figure, but uh, the figure you're drawing from is going to be from sculptures for the first few years. How's that before you ever go near an actual real live model? <laughs> and uh, that was commonly done, you know. Now, this one I'm just doing with shading, okay? So I've decided I have a lot of the things in the right place. Maybe not everything, but... Now, we have the arms more or less in the right place, I think. I think that elbow might be further up this way. And, you know, you come back from it a bit every so often to have a look. Does that look right? But, you know, you haven't committed too much if you're just doing a... Got something going wrong with this arm because the elbow should be on the knee, you see. So... Uh, you haven't committed too much if you've just got the wireframe down before you start building on it. And if you are working in just pencil or in pastel, you can rub things out. These ones, they don't really rub out too handy. So I'm just um, enjoying working on them. So uh, these days, um, you you don't study as much from sculptures. Uh, but like someone like me, who really likes classical art and likes academic art and old masters and everything. Uh, we're so wowed by stuff like this that we go, oh, yeah, I really want to do some drawing from that. Because uh, it, it, it just makes you appreciate these pieces even more. You realise how mind-blowingly good they are. And um, the technique for this piece is incredible as well because this is... Um, using a lost wax technique and i first uh, found out what a lost wax technique was when i was a kid I used to watch open university programs <laughs> on the weekends on tv in the days when you couldn't really choose what you wanted on tv and there wasn't cable tv and you know so um they had uh art programs on for art history students and uh, sometimes you get a really good one and they, they showed you what lost wax technique was. And um, it's basically where you make a mold for this is bronze, this piece. And you make a mold and then you pour in wax and uh, you then make another kind of a mold from that. Then you pour in bronze. And this is all done in different sections and then weld it together very skillfully. And then they did a amazing things with it like um had different metal different alloys like um in the face there's bruising under one eye and that's a different uh alloy or mix of the metal to give a bluish bruise <laughs> and like there are cuts and everything on the head in this and on the ears and they um put in a little bit of copper to make it look like um the they were fresh wounds that had just been cut you know just the skill in it was incredible now you see the reason that i'm thinking of getting the brown paper out is because those biceps and everything the highlights on them would be very interesting to do on brown paper i think now what i like about this the chest area here right this is the guy, obviously, a boxer is going to have really well-developed arms, very broad and muscular. But um, a lot of sort of modern references, say, for really muscular guys might be things like um, 
you know, Marvel magazines and things like that, where the chest is always kind of represented as um, being sort of pushed out and flexed like this, you know, and super muscular and always um, in a taut, the muscles always in a taut position. So um, what I like about this is that his chest is in a resting position because his back, if you were looking across the back of his back, it's that shape, isn't it? So um, it's curved that way, right? So the front is going to have a slight flattened out effect as well. Slightly, not quite soup bowly, because the chest, if, you, if you've got a muscular chest, it's hardly going to be an inward soup bowl shape. But it's not, um, there's no tension showing on it. And that's what's uh, very nice about the sculpture is that the difference between these areas where it's all kind of very we know it's very tense muscle and it's all rounded and flexed out and this bit where it's uh, you know this kind of inward feeling that's what creates um, a nice kind of a interest in the sculpture and, you know, it is a boxer at rest. So rest is kind of a theme in it. But he is a guy that his whole living is from being very active, yeah? So the body is never really resting. And it does give off this slightly tortured feeling because um, of the damage to him after the match basically that the sculptor has taken a lot of care to show but there's a kind of a sublime thing nearly about um, how how lovely the body is in its um, struggle there, there's definitely a kind of a, you know, some some little philosophical thing being said here. You know, uh, it's always something philosophical said. If you if you if you go to the trouble of sculpting something or, you know, making a a work of art about something, I'm not sure I have this working terribly well here. I might look at that bit from the side again. We're going to get the brown paper out now and work on an orange on that different color. As different things will happen. Now, uh, when I'm working down the, the leg, I think that the knee, the structure of the knee is going to be very important. Don't know that I have that quite right either, to be honest with you. Something wrong with lengths of them. That forearm length of the forearm. These bits here, if you're wondering, are kind of wraps. It looks like a mixture of maybe a muslin cloth and they'd have sort of leather wraps around the hands as well. Protect your knuckles when you're boxing. I know. <laughs> they might have had metal bits in the knuckles as well. Don't really know. He certainly got a got his face very damaged so like the story this piece tells is so interesting because it's it's about age as well it's about experience and age um it's also about uh, physical limits isn't it it's about the body um as being a uh, being a tool to fight with but it's, it's there's something spiritual going on as well I feel with it you know transcendent sort of it does have a transcendent quality and this head looking away has to do with that transcendent thing um one piece I read about it and you know 
you can be very influenced by what you read. But I was I was thinking of that transcendent thing before I read this. So I don't think that it didn't influence me or anything. Um, the thing I read was the person, I think it was the person who took the photo, maybe, or or maybe it was the, and in the art magazine, the person that went to look at the thing. Um, see, parts of the strumming aren't really good. I don't like that kind of line there. It's a bit kind of um, insensitive. That's what you call an insensitive kind of a line. <laughs> um, sorry, I'm in and out. I find it very hard to talk and drum. But I do want to tell you all about this piece in case you don't get around to reading the thing, you see. But I mean, it's up to you to read it or not read it, <laughs> whatever you want. But um, yeah, I have it kind of loosely there. Yeah, somebody said that when they went to see this, that there was somebody standing uh, in the position that this figure was looking in and that the feeling that he got, he was standing over here somewhere, the feeling that he got looking at the figure, knowing that that figure looked like it was looking at the other person was really weird because... Um, he does look. This figure does look like he's he's got he's he might be just between rounds and he's going to stand up again. You know, like he really does look. He really has life, which is pretty good going for somebody from one BCE or possibly. You see, this this is so interesting to read about this thing because he might actually be from earlier. They don't know whether Apollonius um, copied this or not, so. They don't know whether it's first century or from an earlier um, Hellenistic period piece. There's his tablet. <laughs> imagine looking down, imagine finding him and looking down 25 foot and seeing this coming out of the ground as excavations are going on. It'd be just so extraordinary, wouldn't it? I love stories about archaeology. It's so interesting. Okay, we're going to get another bit of paper out now. We're, we're pretty warmed up. And I might go in at different angles as well. Let's see what other... Uh... Oh, I just had those three. There, there are loads of them online you see but i thought oh well i'll just stick to the oh no i had one more okay we'll do something from sideways as well but we'll we might do this um on brown paper first okay so i'm keen to do it on brown paper because i want to get those highlights you see so this will be incorporated into the page later and, you know, as I say, you can just cut things out and stick them on the same page. And then it's a good idea to, um, I have this kind of mounting tape stuff that doesn't damage walls. It's just like a double-sided tape and it comes on and off pretty easy. And that's really nice to put a piece that you worked on up on the wall and look at it later. And to see what you think of it from distance and everything. And, you know, just as you're walking by and everything, it lets you think about the work that you've been doing. And, you know, your critical thinking faculties uh, kick in then, you see. But uh, I want to get at all this now, you see. And on the white paper, I could kind of laboriously come along and shade in things and then get all my white highlights going and everything. But it's just easier on this paper because the the mid-tone is already there for you. So the background that this was against, that darker colour was already oh, the darker colour was darker enough. Oh, it does look darker enough. Oh, just... Okay, so I'm working from the first photo again for this one. And I could come along with my wireframe thing again. My wireframe idea. And I kind of know where things are because I've done it before. So it shouldn't take me as long 
being able to get at the thing. Even the backbone is not going to be as long, possibly, as, um, you know, you'd think it would be because we're looking slightly down at him because he's seated. So there's all kinds of challenges here in this piece. But really, what we're trying to get at is the main ways that light is hitting him and the musculature and everything. So we're not going to like do kind of super close-up portrait. I just included that portrait for you to uh, for anybody who's not particularly interested in doing figure drawing um, and would might like to have a go at the portrait. And I wanted you to see the fantastic modeling on it as well. Because um he would have had an amazing amount of detail on him, like the eyes, the wood he would have had eyes, a lot of these figures have kind of um they might be um ivory whites of their eyes or glass or the irises of their eyes might be kind of, you know, some something that looks a bit jewel like like glass, you know. So they would be uncannily real. But even without that, he's uncannily real. Um you feel you know this person, although they say it isn't a portrait of a particular person. So let have, let's have a look at what we have. We have a few options for white here. Now you see we could have gone with we could have gone into colour and gone with our Conte chalks or pastels and done a little bit of colour, but we're not gonna we're not gonna get into that. We're just gonna stick with these pencils. I don't have that much time apart from anything else. So I am going to go into, uh, oh, it doesn't really like this paper. <laughs> going to go into the middle of that muscle. It's not crazy about it. Actually, I might have to use the past one yet. Wait, we'll see. I'm looking for the main highlight areas, which are that kind of swollen cheek. down the arm and uh, they give a fantastic wait let's see where that hand is lined up the hand is actually lined up with this, kind of the side of his face you see you might have to every so often drop a line that kind of way to find how far out something is um, and then dropping a line or running a line across to measure one thing position in relation to another can be incredibly useful um, here we go. And I've completely forgotten what I was going to say there. Half of me would like to, you know, just stop talking during this live stream, and the other half is kind of gone. No, I want, uh, you know, it might be an idea to make this point about something. Or <laughs> but like you know I don't know like some of you have, have loads of experience at drawing and some of you might not have as much as me I don't know some might have a lot more than me so it's very hard to pitch it right to you know that is not right there's something wrong there and it's a foreshortening problem <laughs> So where can I find a marker over here? See, it's good when something goes wrong because I can. It does you no harm to see me struggle. It's a, something minor, something minor, but it's it is. We're going to look at our negative space to try and fix it. Yeah. So there's the negative space there. So it's wrong, but not that wrong. It's just gone out too far that way. I think. I actually had it not as problematic on that one. And if you struggle too long with something like this, you end up with kind of a weak drawing. That's what's going to happen with this one. But, you know, hey, such is life. And this is why we need practice at things, because we're not just good all the time. So don't be down if that goes wrong, you know. It's part of the learning process and um, it's not really any place for an ego in 
learning, is there? You know? Because you can't get things wrong sometimes. I don't want to get hung up on the head. I'm having a really hard time with this drawing. And I don't know whether it's paper or because I got a position wrong and it's now knocking everything out. Um, but this is why it's good um, to do. Ah, here's another line I need to get. You see this here, this line here. That's something I need to sort out. This is this drawing has just gone terribly, <laughs> and it's really hard to fix because I can't really do a hell of a lot with the lines here. Just so bad. This is sort of one that you go, oh, I don't want this one on a live stream. It's that bad. But hey, what can you do? Um. So yeah, I I I don't know what it is about this paper. The pencil isn't moving terribly nicely on. It. But like the, that doesn't explain like my poor drawing, you know. It it went downhill from there. That was not bad. But, you know, there's some things there that needed a little bit to change, but the arms are just weird on that. I don't know why I got it. So that looks like it should be like just much further in or something. You see the trouble I'm having fixing it up now because of the medium one. But it's making me a lot bolder about it, you know. In a way, I make a mistake and then I sort of go, yeah, okay, I don't care about the rest. Of it. <laughs> and uh, it moves me along with it in a way, you know. So that's good. So there are so many really good Greek, Greek sculptures out there and the Roman stuff as well. They're really good. So just to discover them, you know, um, is like drawing them is a great way to uh, become more interested in them because you start noticing details of them and say, well, what's that about? You know? Or you can do things like you might get interested in parts of them like the hand or the face and get into, you know, approaching them from a, a different way everything's done so well on it the hands are beautiful on it as well and he looks like he has some sort of little um glove under the under this bit as well that goes up to here somewhere because there are actually sort of little seams showing in that and he has his hand crossed over, so I'm not quite sure where his knuckle is on that. That's the point of it's there somewhere. That's the point of going around uh, from different angles, and that's why those sculptures are super. So his other knee is somewhere kind of underneath here, but I don't have this arm quite in the right position. Because I know that I'm not sure where I went wrong, to be honest with you. Uh, those arms, I have those arms in totally wrong position. But in, you know, where the problem started, whether it started with the head too far over or what it is, I'd actually have to start again probably to figure that out. <laughs> it looks terrible though. Not to worry, we'll do uh we'll still do the highlights. Put in the highlights in it. And the lower arm. So where the light is catching this guy. Basically. Okay. 
Menschen in meinem Mittelalter ganz leer. And I'll give up and get it to try and look good. You have to sometimes. But I can still work on the highlights, you see. Still learn something about them. So that listening look of somebody still in total sweat after uh, being in a boxing match, he really captured that fantastic well. I have this forearm looking so incredibly long at the moment. That's actually down at the wrist. This is not what you call a keeper, this <laughs> this uh, particular sketch here, but it, I would for the day and I would um I would put it up on the wall, you know, and look at it and figure out well what did they do wrong exactly, or go back over it in pen or just draw it on something else beside it and figure out what went wrong where. You'd see it, you say, uh, once you're finished drawing it. Um, if you don't get, if you can't figure it out in between, but I've no hope of fixing because I can't rub things out with this. But that's okay. Don't mind. Well, we sorted. I wish it hadn't been on that stream. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> it's good for me. Good for my ego to muck up. This is actually on the same, I'm still trying to fix it, you see, this is on the same plane as the chest. See, I'm, I'm learning from my mistake. Great. <laughs> this is me persuading myself that mistakes are great. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Do I believe myself? I don't know. Okay, so... Get in there with black and make some more definite decisions. I hope he's not going out of the picture too much. He is a bit. I'm expecting you to see all my mock ups, and I don't even have them in the picture properly. Yeah, so he must have been amazing when he had his. His eyeballs in. But he, he's still amazing without them, isn't he? I think he is. Okay, I kind of have the right angle on that. Not going to do a whole lot of detail yet, Potter. Just want to get the... Only I want to get um, the lighting. And, you know, uh, and on something else, I might be doing a lot of the work of um, exploring the figure by using colour to get it. And those pastels that I showed you, I used to use them a lot in life drawing classes. And really enjoy them. Uh, life drawing is one of those things. It's not like super easy. It presents kind of interesting challenges all the time. But if you're somebody that likes challenges, it's such a good thing to do. So uh, I could actually probably save some of it with the pastels. I don't know. <laughs> I don't I don't want to I don't want to get too tricky on this one because you know I'm not going to spend like hours on the one piece but you see how we got to try a few different angles that's working out slightly better now once we get the highlights in this 
um, getting that bit of the chest on the right plane seemed to solve a bit of a problem down there for me. You see the way that arm is kind of making more sense now. It's funny, isn't it? The way one thing, a uh, very small thing, literally just that area there, the shading in that area there was messing up the whole thing. It's it's actually um semi sorted now. It's not fabulous, but you know, it's semi sorted out from getting the tones in there a bit better. See, you know, learning from problems. It's nice. It's nice to have problems. <laughs> Remind me I said that. It's nice to have that. I like to have problems. Okay, finally we can move on to this leg. God. 256. I have only four minutes to sort out this problem. And uh, we're down at the feet. Feet, everybody finds feet dif difficult, I think. Feet and hands people find very different. Difficult. We could do some hand studies sometime, maybe if you want. Or um the other thing I'm thinking about doing, maybe I don't know, I don't like to decide this early on, but another thing, see I'm looking at the negative space down here again, okay, to help me get the positioning. Um another thing I'm thinking about doing next week, the possibility is still life. Do a little bit of stuff because I like, you know, jumping around doing a few different things on these live streams. Um so that people don't get bored with just doing the same thing or me doing the same thing all the time. And that uh, maybe, you know, you don't get the impression, oh yeah, she only does trees or she only does this, that or the other. I do anything that kind of takes my interest at the time, you know, that sort of way. Like a lot of artists, I'm just exploring all the time. Not always, you know discovering the secrets of the universe every time I explore but you know I'm always uh, looking for something new and different or how to do this that or the other thing you know but then again like I can get my obsessions and be just interested in doing like trees for months but I do realize that maybe not everybody shares my obsession so you don't necessarily want to see me do trees all the time so, yeah, we might do still lives or something else, depending on what mood takes me next week. And, uh, of course, you're welcome to make any suggestions you want. And if it's something I'm enthusiastic about, too, it could happen. Uh, yeah, the knees there are going to be very important in <clears throat> getting that leg to make sense. And the foot not to be afraid of that kind of bit of weird foreshortening that goes on in the foot it's basically a simplified shape you know with shading on and uh it was still um even though i found it hard to correct any of my mistakes or i think it was still a, a nice interesting Thing to do to um, work on this coloured paper as well so that I could look at where the highlights for the figure were and it did bring out this idea of the scooped out shape of the chest because of that slump at the back. So this piece would go in, we're very near the end you see so on the call today but like normally if I was doing something like that I'd actually fill up the page and be working in here and everything I have a problem like that I'd go over here maybe do a little bit of you know trying that bit again with the with the shoulders you know and work on that for a while over here to try and sort that problem out and do it up here not to worry if you have your page very messy and this will just get you know that will get cut out and stuck in there as well so you'll have the same thing going on or I might go on find um different and there are loads of them 
him from different angles and working from that side facing that way or and from the front as well I mean I'm understanding them from all those different angles I just I didn't uh, do it here because I haven't provided those reference photos for you and I'm, I'm working from the reference photos that I provided for you but you know the link, links are there to go and find more of them because people have taken loads and loads of photos of this terrific sitter that we had so I hope you got something interesting out of that and um, I hope that if you um, are doing figure studies and you're having trouble finding uh, where to get scissors that you might think oh yeah that's kind of an interesting idea I might try that look at a few sculptures and um, discover an interesting world of, of sculpture and uh, get some free models hey why not so happy figure drawing everybody and I'll see you next week Take care. Bye.